Our dear viewers, a joint press conference was held in Cairo following the signing of the Egyptian uh, EU Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. President Sisi uh, told the conference that Egypt and the EU signed deals of investment uh, to the tune of 7.4 billion euros over four years. EU Commissioner Chief Ursula von der Leyen also addressed the conference saying that Egypt and the EU strategic partnership agreement was the culmination of 30 years of engagement between the two sides. So we shed more light about that uh, summit uh, between Egypt and uh, the EU. We are very much delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Hassan Wagi, Professor of International Negotiations. Good morning, uh, Doctor. Dr. Wagi. Yes. Good morning, you sir. You hear me? Yes, I hear you properly. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how doctor, are uh, how are you, sir? Uh, doctor, okay. how do you see uh, the importance of this very important visit by uh, EU leaders to Egypt and their summit with President Abdel Fattah al Sisi uh, on Sunday? Yes, uh, I think this is a, that was a very big event and very important one. Uh, six uh, leaders from Europe came uh, mm -hmm. to Cairo, yes. uh, uh, which tells you about the pivotal uh, role Cairo is playing mm -hmm. uh, in the Mediterranean at large and in the world at, uh, in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, in signing the EU-Egypt Egypt joint declaration um, two days ago, uh, meant to raise the level of relationship um, to a strategic and uh, to much more uh, mm. uh, partnership uh, orientation with the Europe, between Egypt and the European Union. Yeah. And, uh, actually, it is, really, it is not new in a sense because it is a reiteration of the commitment, the previous commitment between Egypt and the EU. Yes. Uh, to build uh, a long-standing relationship uh, uh, on several levels, actually, the geographic, you know, because of the, the geographic level, uh, the cultural level, the political, economic, and people-to-people -people ties. Yes. So it is uh, an old story that's being renewed in a very uh, happy tone. Mm -hmm. Doctor, also... Uh, the, uh, during the conference, uh, the president and the EU signed uh, an agreement uh, deal uh, of investment uh, of about 7.4 billion euros over four years. The importance of this deal for Egypt? Yes, uh, I think the importance uh, lies in uh, consolidating the Egyptian economy, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think that... Uh, both parties uh, are keen uh, uh, towards something very important. You know, when the world, a uh, long time ago, um, you know, the buzzword was the globalism and globalization. Mm. Now the buzzword is regionalism. If you read the mm. four pages of the declaration, you can find the word the regional cooperation, regional efforts. Yes. Uh, the word regional is being reiterated uh, uh, if you do a content analysis of, uh, of this uh, important declaration. Uh, mm. And also, um, you know, so regionalism is there. You know, the north of the Mediterranean uh, and the south of the Mediterranean mm. together. Uh, there's a very historic uh, relationship that needs to be renewed mm. uh, in, uh, with, with great uh, uh, effort to make it far more better for both parties. Indeed. Sir, also during uh, the high-level meetings, aspects of economic and investment cooperation were discussed and how to actually formulate specific steps to ensure optimal uh, benefit from the uh, comparative advantage of uh, both parties, both for Egypt and the EU. What are the most important aspects of these cooperation agreements from your point of view, Doctor? You know, actually, again, uh, if you do a, a content analysis of the declaration you can find that there are eight mm. axes uh, on the political level on the on the economic level uh, each level needs uh, a lot of talk to, to can you reply uh, what it is uh, mm. you have trade you have water issues yes. you have migration and mobility mm. and you have security issues uh, so these are important uh, axes and uh, these axes 
uh, of course, uh, what could be subsumed under that? Mm. A lot of crises, current crises that is taking place uh, all over the world through this eight axis, mm. or what is important now is not only to manage uh, with the European Union this crisis because um, we all have a stake in it, but yes. also the most important thing is to anticipate what could be anticipated because there are certain uh, uh, levels that, that you have to anticipate and to prevent rather than manage. Hmm. Also, joint cooperation uh, was discussed between Egypt and Italy in uh, the sectors of food security, agricultural production, and land reclamation, where it was actually agreed to establish a partnership between Egypt and Italy within uh, the framework of the major uh, national projects. So, uh, that uh, advanced the uh, Italian technology uh, in transferring uh, that to Egypt um, in these uh, particular domains in a way that uh, could maximize the revenues and increase the agricultural exports. Uh, how that could be beneficial in that domain to Egypt, uh, this cooperation with Italy, Dr. Waghi? Yeah, actually, uh, it is all, not only with uh, Italy, but uh, mm. Italy plays an important role, a uh, specific important role in when it comes to this. Yes, uh, Egypt used to be uh, to be called an agricultural uh, country. Uh, mm. So agriculture is extremely important for food security, for ensuring uh, food security. And, you know, the, 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 the current crisis that, uh, that engulfed the whole world uh, mm. lately in the last few years, uh, prove that, that there should be um, food security. Food mm. security will never uh, be achieved unless you cultivate. And uh, agriculture needs a lot of great uh, uh, coordination and uh, a great uh, um, orchestration of who mm. can do what to, to do that, to, to complement each other, I mean. Yes. Complementing each other is extremely important. When it comes to Italy, it is uh, also uh, agriculture with the uh, technology transfer, with, uh, and you will never know, uh, you will never leave, I mean, uh, the water issues and the water security mm -hmm. and uh, the water management resources. They are so connected to the agriculture, of course. Mm -hmm. Actually, Dr. Wagih, the European Union and Egypt are working together to establish a comprehensive and long-term partnership uh, for uh, Egypt. Can you explain uh, to us the importance of this uh, partnership? Also, Egypt uh, did play a very important role in the uh, migration, uh, illegal immigration file. So uh, to what extent this partnership is a win-win situation, both for Egypt and for Europe as well? Yeah, I, I think when it comes to migration in particular, uh, it, it is very interesting if you listen to what the leaders uh, of the European Union said mm. when they recognized the fact that Egypt hosts like 9 million. Uh, yes, we used to say 9 million people mm. are living in Egypt here, yes. uh, and Egypt is to afford them every, uh, all aspects of uh, viable life. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, it is very important that they quoted the United Nations saying that. Mm. So, uh, knowing this reality that Egypt is really playing a very important role in managing its affairs with, uh, in a very humanistic way mm. uh, with, uh, with people who really came from other countries and they are uh, estimated by 9 million uh, mm. people. So, I think uh, the strategy between Egypt and the European Union is very important and crucial here. They don't want to, to say... Uh, just avert the migration to Europe. Mm. No. Uh, the whole thing is much more strategic than that. Indeed. Uh, mm. We would like, uh, both of us, the two parties, would like to, to deal with the root of the problem, to, see, to seek ways that people who come from Libya or Sudan or maybe Egypt or whoever from Africa, it is not a matter of some boats going there mm. and uh, people are being exposed to danger and stuff like that. No, the, the, the philosophy here is very important, very humanistic. Let us help those people not to migrate. Let us help Africa to, to have much more uh, establishments and uh, much mm. more uh, uh, projects and much more uh, mm. finance for those people to up, upgrade the, the levels 
uh, of economy, especially when it comes to a country mm. like Egypt, which uh, has uh, more than 100 million uh, people, yes. and it proved, it's not a matter of number, it proved to, to be very uh, uh, important mm. in playing a very crucial role mm. in the uh, issues of migration and mm. security, uh, of and stability, and seeking peace, which uh, supposed to be the, the, the ground for, mm. uh, for any developmental efforts. So yes. uh, that, uh, uh, to have the six uh, mm. leaders from the European Union uh, in Cairo here declaring that Egypt's uh, role um, is extremely, extremely important, not for the stabilization of the Middle East, but for the entire world. Mm. Indeed. Also, sir, uh, related to the issue of illegal uh, migration, would you elaborate for us Egypt's role in uh, combating the illegal um, immigration, especially with the signing of an agreement similar to the one that uh, Italy did sign with uh, Tunisia in uh, 2023, which is related to the border um, control? Yes, I think uh, uh, it is like that, but it is much more comprehensive than that mm. uh, because uh, we uh, they mentioned something very important about that they are not uh, their objective is not only uh, to fight the gangs mm. who really uh, handle uh, the the issue of uh, migrating of youth and migrating of people. Yes from the south of the Mediterranean to the north of the Mediterranean. No, it is much more than that because it is connected also with security issues, with fighting terrorism, with many, many uh, diversified uh, issues. And I, as I've said, uh, the, the good thing about the mm. declaration uh, is the intention to deal with the roots of mm. the migration problem so as we can have it from and economic and political perspectives rather than making it a marginal issue in an isolated silo. Indeed. Sir, also the president of the European Commission noted that during the visit to Cairo that Egypt is already, as she said, a lifeline for Gaza and that the European Union is fully using uh, this lifeline to uh, respond to the humanitarian needs in the Gaza Strip. Uh, can you shed more light about the Egyptian role in delivering aid to the uh, Palestinian territories and how uh, the EU is dealing with this very alarming humanitarian situation and security situation in Gaza as well? Yes, uh, of course, uh, Egypt uh, has exerted a great deal of effort uh, to not only to provide uh, economic aid, but to, to make a stop on this uh, unfair war. Because, you mm. know, when you have this war uh, getting into the civilian, mm. killing, uh, killing a great number of civilians, mm. and I think that uh, the time has come to say, uh, to make a very big stop on this war and to come to a ceasefire. And I think if you analyze mm. the statements of the sex leaders, yes. you, you can find them very compatible with the Egyptian agenda and the Egyptian role for uh, making a stop on this war. Because if you make uh, a mm. stop on this war and the, you make a ceasefire, you can all, uh, also make far more uh, better job uh, for the entire world to, to get, um, to get the, the aid uh, for the Gaza people. And I think that what they said uh, is good and unfortunate. Good uh, because, uh, yeah, they said that we cannot accept the famine in Gaza. Uh, this is, uh, uh, Mr. Arsula said that, and uh, we will never accept that or tolerate that. Hmm. But uh, no one is able so far to yes. stop this uh, military machine from uh, stopping mm. uh, uh, despite the all losses that uh, and the humanitarian catastrophe that is there. Mm. Indeed, Dr. Hassan Wagi, Professor of International Negotiations, thank you so much, sir, for uh, being with us and for your very precious uh, input. Our dear viewers will go to a short break and after that we'll be back to resume our segments in the breakfast show. So stay tuned.